time, rushing to the most dangerous situations in the city, putting my life on the line each and every day. An armed suspect was holding hostages at the top floor of a 20-story building. My job was to lead a team as we repelled down the side of the building in full gear and hit the guy before he knew what was happening. Well, you know what they say. No plan survives contact with the enemy. We waited for the signal and then repelled just over the side of the building, our lives literally hanging from one single repel line. We broke the top three windows with a crash and tossed three OC pepper spray grenades to subdue everyone inside and placed another grenade on the deck so the suspect wouldn't come running out and try to escape, or worse yet, throw one of the hostages out, possibly killing him. Just as we were about to enter the building, a massive gust of wind blew a cloud of pepper spray right back in our faces. We were coughing, sniffling, embarrassed, and could barely see. But as professionals, we still got in there and did our job. If you've ever been hit by pepper spray before, it's not a pleasant experience. For the rest of the day, I was coughing and sneezing. Tears were streaming down my face. I felt like my body was on fire inside. I could practically feel the heat radiating off me like a furnace. I felt like I'd just done an intense CrossFit workout and run a half marathon, even though I was just sitting on my couch recovering. And that's when it hit me. I already knew that oleoresin capsaicin, the OC used in pepper spray grenades, could rapidly raise your body temperature. But was it possible that it could actually burn away my wife's belly fat without exercise? Could accidentally getting hit with pepper spray actually be the answer I'd been looking for? It sounded weird, even a little bit dangerous. But then I found an article in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that flat out proved my weird idea was actually 100% true. See, in 2012, researchers from the Hokkaido University Graduate School of Medicine ran a weird experiment. First, they put 18 healthy men, aged 20 to 32, through two hours of cold exposure. Nothing extreme. They sat in a room with a the thermostat at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, just cold enough to make the experiment work. You see, cold exposure is a well-known way to dramatically increase energy expenditure through the activation of something called brown adipose tissue. Then later, the researchers simply fed the same men 9 milligrams of capsinoids. After both treatments, they measured the men's skin temperature and energy expenditure for two hours in a single, blind, randomized, placebo-controlled crossover design. What did they discover? That when the men were given the capsinoids, as opposed to a placebo, it increased energy expenditure and activation of brown adipose tissue just as much as after the cold exposure. In other words, the capsaicin alone raised the inner thermostat for men, turning their bodies into a veritable fat-burning furnace. But that wasn't all. I also learned how capsaicin could actually transform useless and dangerous white fat into high-octane brown fat that actually burns your ugly white fat for energy, meaning you can actually use your unwanted white fat as fuel instead of burning sugar like most folks do, and that makes it almost impossible to get and stay thin. I don't want to get too scientific here, but the easiest way to picture the way brown fat works is to picture a car with the engine revving and the clutch pedal pushed all the way to the floor. Brown fat uncouples the calorie burning of fat and sugar through the actions of a class of regulating proteins called uncoupling proteins. When the brown fat mitochondria are uncoupled, it's like revving your engine all the way into the red without letting the car go into gear. All of a sudden, you're burning a ton of fat without moving a muscle, losing weight while sitting on your butt and watching TV. That was the good news. The bad news, as I soon discovered, was that the only real source of capsaicin is cayenne pepper. You know, that stuff that makes you sneeze and sweat and wish you could just bury your head in a giant bucket of water until the pain goes away, which is why we use it for those grenades in the first place, to totally incapacitate a criminal. I imagined my beautiful wife with her eyes watering, sweating profusely, and telling me I'd done something horrible to her, and knew that cayenne pepper wasn't going to do the job. I needed to find another spice that would have all the benefits of capsaicin, but could actually be ingested without making you feel like your eyeballs were going to burn through your skull. I spent hours and hours digging through journal after journal, but eventually I broke down into tears when I found it. The holy grail spice that just might save my wife's life. A secret spice I can't reveal to you yet that turned out to be the holy grail of weight loss we'd been looking for for decades, and that gave all the incredible benefits of capsaicin without any of the terrible and painful side effects. As I finished reading, I felt like I wanted to cry. Not because it was sad, but because for the first time in years, I felt hope that I could actually help my wife and help us get our life and our relationship back on track. The next morning, I got to work like a man possessed. I knew the secret spice I discovered could raise your body temperature and help you turn your bad white fat into good brown fat. And that just by transforming her bad fat into good fat, I could change Tara's life forever and give her back the hope she'd been denied for so long. But how else could I give her that? 
I mean, I couldn't expect to throw a grenade at my wife. Not only would that lead to my getting divorced, but from my research, I knew popping a pepper spray grenade was probably the worst way to deliver these fat-transforming spices in a way the body could actually absorb. And eventually, I figured out the best and most delicious way to give Tara the potent spices she needed was by doing nothing harder than brewing her a cup of tea. My wife looked at me like I was crazy the first time I gave her my special tea. I remember how she held her nose and steeled herself for the awful taste she expected. And the smile that exploded across her lips as she said it tasted kind of like cinnamon. I had to beg her to keep drinking it every day. She thought it was just another waste of time. But slowly, over the next week, something started to change. Her eyes got brighter. Her energy came roaring back. Even her hair seemed thicker, fuller, and shinier than it had. But the real shock came a week later when I finally convinced her to step on the scale. And the tears of joy that formed in her eyes when she saw she'd lost 11 pounds. A week after that, her uniform pants didn't fit anymore. She broke down crying, ran into the bedroom, and showed me how they kept falling off her hips in a way they hadn't in 25 years. And a week after that, well, a week after that, she was my wife again. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Like a time machine back almost a decade since her accident. All of a sudden, she needed less sleep and felt twice as rested. She was sailing through night shifts in her patrol car without even a single yawn, and attacking house projects she'd been ignoring for years. But the most amazing thing was watching her stomach. Watching the belly fat she'd been fighting for years and years shrink away to nothing. Until one day, I came home and saw her walking around the house in nothing but a sports bra and some cute little shorts, her beautiful flat belly on display, calling out to me. I was a little afraid to touch her at first, afraid she'd tell me not to. But when I wrapped my arms around her, she melted against me, tilted her head so I could kiss her neck, smiled at me and told me to meet her in the bedroom, and gave me the most amazing, passionate night of my life. And as we lay there naked, laughing and cuddling, and in love in a way we hadn't been in so long, I felt a smile spread across my face as I realized I'd done it. I'd saved my wife. But that was just the beginning. Honestly, I had no plans at all to share this secret with anybody else. I just wanted to help my wife get her life back and save my family. But with Tara's three-week transformation, it was impossible to keep a secret. My buddy John was the first one to beg to try it out. He's a truck driver with a truck driver's belly. He came to visit, took one look at Tara, and said, What the heck have you been doing? So we wrote everything down, all our notes and experiments and things we'd tried. John texted me four days later, and I had to read the text three times to make sure it wasn't a mistake. Todd, this is amazing, he said. I'm already down 12 pounds, and the only exercise I've done is to get up and go to the fridge. Thank you. Next, Tara's sister got on the bandwagon. She'd been heavy her whole life and just thought it was the way she was supposed to be. But three weeks after trying this crazy new protocol of ours, she was fitting back into her jeans from high school. And from there, things just got out of control. I achieved a weird cult status locally. Friends, family, people from 16 to 76 started to use this new method. And again and again, they raved about the results. Our friends Peter and Stacy managed to drop combined 11 pounds in three days. Seven for Peter and four for Stacy. Even better, Peter went on to lose a whopping 84 pounds over the next couple of months, completely transforming his life. And Stacy lost over 21 pounds from her petite body. Finally, Tara and John and Peter and Frank all ganged up on me and told me I had to share this incredible secret with the world, that I had a responsibility to help as many people as I could who were suffering just like Tara was for so long. We spent months taking all my scribbled notes and theories and ideas and turning it into one simple, easy-to-follow manual. A manual we ended up calling the 21-Day Flat Belly Fix because, well, because that's what it's done again and again. (laughs) 